Hi, my name's Christine, and I'm going through Percy Jackson withdrawal. It's been a few hours since I read my last thing regarding Percy Jackson, and um, I'm I'm doing okay. I just I don't know anyone in real life who's read Percy Jackson, so I just really want to talk to you guys about my struggles. Um, and I was hoping maybe you'd want to discuss some things. About the movie? So I just recently watched the Percy Jackson movie, The Lightning Thief, right? My reactions were basically cringe, 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 cringe. Have these people read the book or did they read a synopsis and then just write the script from that? <laughs> so the first time I tried to watch, I couldn't do it. I turned it off right after he killed the Monotaur. It was just really hard and it was ruining my mind vision. But then after I finished the entire series and the entire Heroes of Olympus series, I couldn't not watch it. Firstly, there's there's just no mist. The mist is not there. That is a major problem. And don't get me wrong, Logan Lerman is beautiful and I just love picturing him as Percy. He's a great actor. But is Logan Lerman 12? Is he? Was anyone in that movie 12? Okay, I don't mind pretending that he's 12. Biggest problem was the script. That didn't sound like the way you talk to me in the book. In the book, you don't make me feel like I'm seven. In the movie, making me feel like I am an invalid. It sounded like the script was catered towards five or six, seven, eight year olds. And this book is so good that it can appeal to everyone. That is an enormous accomplishment as a writer. In the movie, we'd have lines after seeing that he was dyslexic with the board and stuff. Then we go home and he's like, Mom, it seems like, it's like this dyslexic and ADHD thing is getting worse. Uh, when will I understand? When? When? This guy's a sleazeball. Why do you stay with him? We can see he's a sleazeball. We don't need him to say it out loud. We don't need him to be underwater for like 10 years in the beginning and um, be like, I don't know, I just feel so comfortable in the water. Chris Columbus really is a children's director. Why did they have a children's director when they're working with people who are older than seven? They're 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, those kids were. <laughs> They just use phones and computers in the movie. No iris messaging. Like Skype and Luke. What what are you doing, man? That attracts all the monsters. And Annabeth doesn't have blonde hair. Just a thing that I always appreciated that Rick Rarden did. Made a blonde character really intelligent. You just could have thrown a wig on the girl. You just could have thrown a wig on the girl. There's no Clarice. There's no Dionysus. That Clarice scene was a great first scene. He was too old to have that happen to him in the movie. Just it wouldn't be believable that some girl stuck Logan Lerman's head in a toilet because he's too attractive and male and old enough to ward off that. Okay, our introduction scene to Annabeth. Where was my waking up in the hospital bed, staring at Annabeth and her saying, you drool and you sleep? Where was that? Where was that? Instead, we go to do Capture the Flag and Annabeth beats the crap out of Percy. I'm just, oh, cringing as ah, she slashes at him and opens up skin. Also, apparently, uh, Percy can heal others with his water powers too. There was no Missouri scene where he jumped off of that tower and he didn't know if he would survive, but when he got in the water, he discovered that he could stay dry and all this really cool stuff. None of the parts were there. Just everything has changed. All I know is a sad hello. There was no oracle. There was no no prophecy, which drives the whole series. No prophecy. Just Hades jumping out of a fire. What? The gods are not allowed to talk to their kids, which is completely plot change from the whole entire series. The gods ignore the kids, not because they have to, but because they just do, because they're assholes and they have a million kids and they're gods. That's why. And we didn't have the big three. They didn't have the whole big three aren't allowed to have children. That is the main thing about the prophecy. No Ares fight. They go to Tennessee where there's a replica of the Pantheon and the statue is there. A replica of the statue. The statue. And I was... Whoa. 
But then I didn't like the flying shoes thing and how Percy used them and fly. I just not right. He doesn't fly. That's not his territory. Stop it. The only thing that I like better in the movie than the book, Grover's character. Grover was kind of really cool. It's kind of pretty awesome. And in the book, he's kind of really not. There was no blue food. That was a little tiny detail. But they would have done it in a Twilight movie, to be honest. They would have put that in for us. Let's just talk about Hades for a second. Totally ruins the whole Rick Riordan Great Paradise version. And when I said paradise, I didn't mean paradise. I mean paradise. Like parody eyes version of hell. You read Dante's Inferno and then you read Rick Riordan's The Lightning Thief and you go down into hell. Just the way it's set up. It's just so great the way he twists in the mythology and I love it and it's funny. And then we go into the one in the movie and it's literally, we don't get to go in the waiting area. It's like they're going to this tunnel, no one else is there and the river sticks is not the river sticks. It's like a floating, they're inside a volcano it looks like. <laughs> they ruined it. It was so beautiful. <laughs> Don't like it. Not happy with you, movie makers, Hollywood, ruining the story. I just wish I was on the board there where they were reading the scripts. I'd be like, mm, no, 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 stop this. Ugh. Know your audience. That is number one rule. Know your audience. Know the fan base. And you did not when you wrote that script. I looked up the whole, because they're doing Sea of Monsters, and Sea of Monsters is coming up next year. So I did a little bit of research on Sea of Monsters, because I had hope that it would be better, maybe, because I heard that they're trying to make it better, because all the fans were outraged. First of all, I think it's very important that you please the fans in these kind of films, especially when it's a huge franchise like Percy Jackson is. If you don't please the fans, you're not gonna get the movie franchise. And even if the movie is shit, but you went by the book, the fans are gonna appreciate it. Now let's take an example, Twilight. Twilight, the movies, not the greatest quality movies. They just didn't translate as well, but it has a huge built-in fan base. And all those people are gonna appreciate that those are word for word, the book lines. That is how the book was, the little, callbacks to little details that Stephanie has put into her books, the way the vampires crack and there are crystal rocks inside, which makes no sense really, because how does the blood flow through? Whatever. That is something that was in the books and it is appreciated that we see it in the movies. It's just the way it is. We go because we appreciate the movies the way they've treated and translated, because they've been translated the way the book was written and we all love the books. Harry Potter, same thing. They have to take things out of Harry Potter because Harry Potter is freaking crazy huge, but everything is there. The only thing I think that was really upsetting, that was really upsetting in Harry Potter was the eyes. The green eyes thing, and that's the only thing that they really didn't address that is a hardcore fan thing. Now, Percy, they just changed the entire movie. That is not the way to gather your loyal built-in fan base from the books. Straying that far off the book, ow, is just gonna push people away. Nathan Fillion is gonna be Hermes. What? That's awesome. Stanley Tucci is Dionysus. Some really attractive dude is Tyson. In the, in the set photos, he has two eyes, but... Hopefully they'll make him have one or else the Cyclops thing is out the window. But then we go to the writer section and the guy who wrote the script wrote Agent Cody Banks, which, I mean, it's okay. It's not Percy Jackson. Guy that co-wrote it is the guy who wrote The Green Lantern. And then the director is Thor Frudel, who is the guy who directed The Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Hotel for Dogs. Does this guy sound like the right choice for an action movie? This is potential franchise material, and I don't know why you wouldn't jump on that with your best team, with your best effort. What were you most disappointed with when you saw the movie for the first time? It just really sh shits on the book. Shits all over it. Really hope they do better on the second one. I know Annabeth has blonde hair, so that changes everything! It doesn't, but it does make me feel better. Are you guys excited at all for Sea of Monsters? Let me know. I'll talk to you next time. Bye! All my conversations somehow turned back to Percy Jackson. And people, just no one's read it. So I'm just explaining... They're just not caring. When is she gonna stop telling me about this book series? Never.